me. Uh, really appreciate that. Today I will cover hanging stone asset that belongs to Atabasca. We're going to talk a little bit about Atabasca, but mostly focused on technical specs for a hanging stone asset. As you can see on the map, it's a very concentrated kind of pad design um, location. And the current production at the asset is 8,900 barrels a day as of April 2025, which is not to be taken for granted because there is huge improvement in the asset performance. It's a long uh, reserve life asset, 60 year reserve life index and significant amount of 2P reserves at 263 million barrels and 959 million based on McDaniel's 2P and PV10. They improved the SOR due to field wide NCG co injection. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. And uh, the SOR is about 3.4 average in 2024. For 2025 activity, which is about $15 million, uh, it's a very low cost of supply asset. They drilled two extended uh, rich sustaining well pairs on production in March. And um, they've been doing extremely well. In fact, uh, I will provide some data associated with that as well. And uh, when it comes to cash gen generation, to gen generate 325 million operating income, uh, which was generated between 2022 to 2024 with minimal capital, because most of the capital was allocated to Lismer expansion, which is uh, the better asset out of the two. So in Q1 2025, operating netback was 34, uh, sorry, $38 per barrel, which was amazing. And low prepayout crown royalties of um, five to nine percent into 2030s thermal oil crown royalty advantage when it comes to oil sense royalty rates as you can see 25 to 40 percent royalty on gross revenue is um, less opex and capex could be realized in the red line in the graph but when you prepay out your royalties are much much less between one to um, maybe like six percent or one to nine percent and so the royalty there on gross revenue is less uh, than, than transportation, actually. So the hanging stone asset is to remain in prepayout out until 2030. And it has a lot to do with their production flow rates, because um, as you produce that, that oil, you basically generate that revenue. And so that royalty is applied on that production. And the assumption here is that um, it's at $70 WTI, which is we're, we're under that right now. So it's more kind of aggressive oil price assumption. Uh, thermal oil division chart, you can see the map where Hangingstone is located kind of north to Greenfire, north to Conoco Sermont asset, north to uh, Lismer and Corner assets in the Christina Lake region. And for Hangingstone, first production was was initiated in 2015. And since 2015, a uh, very limited amount of wells were drilled in the asset and overall investment was very minimal, uh, which resulted in lower cost of supply and very low decline on the asset snapshot of uh, Atabasca oil, as mentioned, Hangingstone today produces about 8,900 barrels a day. Well, the overall guidance for 2025 is 33,500 to 35,500 barrels a day, with 4,000 barrels a day being produced from the Duvernay Energy Corp, which is kind of independent entity ran under Atabasca oil, with the capital there being spent at 75 million and basically reinvested to grow production. The capital for Hangingstone and Lismer is, a, is about 250 million. So based on the numbers I shared, Hangingstone is a very low cost of supply asset with very steady production with improvement based on the two wells that they recently drilled that one of them is produces actually close to 1,000 barrels a day. The development overview of the asset, the Hangingstone project, as mentioned, was uh, firstly initiated first team in March 2015 with 25 well pairs. Up until recently, those 25 whelpers were the only whelpers operating in the asset. So minimal investment was uh, was advanced uh, for that asset. It's located 20 kilometers south of Fort McMurray, Alberta. So five production pads, five pairs per pad, and two approved sustaining drainage areas with central process, process facilities seen on the map and offsite services and utilities. Infrastructure, fuel gas from TransCanada Pipeline, deal bid export to Enbridge Chichum Terminal, and deal it from Inter Pipeline were drilled to advance and understand the asset as seen on the map. Development area 7.32 kilometers squared and project area 7.82 kilometers squared. Smart in allocating uh, in drilling the pads in locations that to avoid bottom water. As seen on the map, there is some locations of bottom water, but they were able to avoid it by kind of drilling outside of those regions. And there is local bottom hole pressure maintenance 
of the pads to make sure bottom water is not coming in. The lean zone with the uh, gas um, thickness is seen on the map for the McMurray top gas formation. So there are little pockets, especially on pad AD and kind of towards pad AE. So I assume the company is really good in, in uh, monitoring gas to oil ratios to make sure that the lean zone is uh, being kind of honored there and uh, extra gas production is not being uh, uh, realized. Although the company is advancing NCG co-injection project uh, on that asset. So in a way that could be somewhat of a benefit. To the bitumen pay classification as seen on the map, um, we have reservoir criteria where you have breccia, which is variable F2 sand, zero to 10% saturation, sand DIHS, so inclined hydrolytic and hydrolytic stratification 10 to 30 percent and my GIHS 30 to 70 percent so the the pay is somewhat is somewhat clean here it's not ideal but it, it looks pretty good when it comes to the development and opportunity to exploit this asset at very low uh, decline rates now the way to look at gross bitumen in place or gbip and reservoir criteria they basically um, account for breccia sand Send DIHS and MAD DIHS, but not MAD over 70%, which is pretty good. Sections in the reservoir where there's 44 meter pay and 38 meter pay. So those are pretty good pays. The, the issue could be the kind of uh, advancing steam chamber development to the challenging regions. But nevertheless, the uh, production curve shows that they're able to successfully mitigate the various heterogeneous areas in the reservoir to produce oil effectively. Production history, and then we're gonna spend a little bit more time on this chart. The reporting here highlights, they have five producing pads, 25 producing SACD well pairs and utilizing NCG co-injection on all pads. And as mentioned recently, they drilled uh, two well pairs. So now they have 27, right? So for the longest time they had 25, now they have 27. As you can see, production barely declined over the course of time. That's a green um, line, but if you look at the a red line, which is steam injection rates, so steam rate, that's significantly declined from 7,000 cubes a day to about 4,000 cubes a day. Uh, water to steam ratio is fairly steady, so they're very good at mitigating the bottom hole pressure. And huge, huge reduction in uh, um, instantaneous steam to air ratio, that's the dotted line, when the instantaneous uh, steam to air ratio declined from uh, north of five to closer to three right now, which is which is great. And you can see minimal basically drilling took place over this course of time where 25 well pairs basically um, integration strategy been advancing for the for the longest time. Uh, now, when it comes to well count, and th that's the 25 well pairs that didn't change much. So the two extra well pairs are very much welcome because now you have uh, advancement of steam chambers and mobile oil that could be kind of drained. And uh, this is something they're taking advantage of, which is, which is really smart. As you can also see when it comes to NCG co-injection strategy, that will be the purple line. They were able to achieve about uh, 25 decks of uh, NCG co-injection kind of in the, during the COVID time frame. And then the reduced NCG co-injection, I suspect that some, has something to do with kind of gas uh, rate uh, production mitigation. But then towards uh, between 2023 to 2024, they start injecting uh, more gas going again to 25 decks to make sure probably that they mitigate the bottom hole pressure declines to sustain oil production and coalescence of the chambers. Now, when it comes to kind of updating more recent data, so as we talk about 2025, we're looking at current production close to 8,900 barrels a day. So based on this chart, you can see the production is not at those levels. In fact, it was kind of declining towards 7,200 barrels a day, but those two well pairs that were drilled are really able to boost production on the asset. The previous month production, which is March uh, 2025, was 8,500 barrels a day. So they saw improvement month over month of 4.3%. So the overall number of producing wells right now is 27, and the average well producing about 330 barrels a day. And the best well, which is one of the newly drilled wells, is producing 1,042 barrels a day. So the number of the wells above average is about 10. So the numbers of producing below is about 17, which is kind of logical for SECD assets. And um, when it comes to the top five wells, they produce about 37% of the overall production rate. The current average injected steam rate is about 31,176 barrels per day from the identified 27 injectors. 
so the company is really doing a good job um, um, kind of reducing SOR. So current steam to ratio is about 3.5. And uh, the water produced to, to steam ratio is about 0.95, where ideally it should be closer to one. So I think the company is doing a good job uh, sustaining the test at low cost of supply, good operation, reducing SOR, reducing emissions. So good job, um, good job at Tabasco. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video about the Tabasco Hangingstone asset. Uh, thank you so much. All the best.